Good afternoon and welcome to Gladstone House. My name is Lee Petrie. I'm the curator here at the hotel. Um, I've been here for just over three years, so I was here in the before times and we moved out there in the new time. Super, super thrilled to have you here today. Um, you are the first workshop in our brand new art studio, so this is a, a momentous uh, occasion. I uh, hope you all had a great lunch. Thanks so much for those of you who joined us for lunch. That's a lovely bit of excitement in the bistro on a Monday. Um, so I'm gonna show you around a little bit and um, we'll try not to get too much between you and a very creative couple of hours. How many of you have been to Gladstone House before? Welcome back, and a couple of newbies. So some of you can really appreciate the transformation. Uh, we are the oldest operating hotel in the city of Toronto, built in 1889, before the streetcar was in, before so many of the things that you see around here. It's kind of amazing to think of this hotel as bearing witness to the growth of the city. This, this character <coughs> um, of the hotel is something that the design team really kept in mind when they were coming up for a new look and a new vision for the hotel. The hotel changed ownership uh, in the spring of 2020, right before the pandemic, and the new owners uh, took the opportunity uh, presented by like, a complete shutdown of hospitality to do all of the renovation work at once. Um, so in every space that we move through, we can see this combination of old and new heritage, but um, a really fresh and contemporary new look. So you come in the door through the cradle stone facade, the Richardsonian Romanesque style, um, but then you immediately see these really cool windows with this purple green light, and I like watching people try to figure out where that light is coming from. Um, there's not strip lighting around the windows, there isn't spots on it, it's dichroic film. Um, which is originally, that for glass was um, invented by NASA, so it has an aerospace application, but then artists were like, hey, this is really cool, we should do something with this. Uh, now it's a film made by 3M, so if you love it, you could actually put it in your own house. <laughs> so the, the different light that you see is just the reaction of the little metal particles in the film with the light outside and inside. So sometimes it's really pink, sometimes it's really orange, sometimes it's more yellow. So you immediately have this, this kind of fun and contemporary experience. Then you step in, and again, this old and new, uh, kind of this beautiful fireplace around, which is actually not original to the building, um, but it is it is vintage. Uh, we did have a big check-in desk in here before, so the space has really been opened up. Um, the couch here and those two chairs are vintage pieces that have been recovered. And then, you're introduced to our amazing art program. Well, I think it's an amazing art program. So on the ceiling, we have this incredible work by Brian Espiritu, a Toronto artist. Uh, not wallpaper, not stencil, over 13,000 individually painted characters. So he uses a special marker pen, um, a paint marker, and he was up on a scissor lift for about three weeks really getting into the zone. He describes it as a, kind of a private language. And I really love the idea of the artist having this kind of meditative story unfolding kind of experience while he was making it. And it makes me think about all of the stories contained in the walls of this hotel over its 132 year history. And then I think it also invites us to think, well, what's my story? What's your story? How are we contributing to all of the stories of this place? And it's a really beautiful way to welcome people into the hotel and get them thinking about the kind of art experience they might have here. Um, the art program at the hotel uh, is a combination of temporary and permanent work. So if it's literally painted on the building, it's pretty permanent. Otherwise, almost everything changes over in different time frames. So this work over the Mantelpiece by Sage Stavonicki Stewart. We have it on loan for six months um, and then it'll flip over to, to something new. Sage is a young photographer. She uses her own body as her subject. Uh, she is actually being right here on this one. Uh, her costume, if you look closely, you realize it's made of paper napkins and disposable knives and forks. So she's inviting us to think about not only our relationship with nature in the city, but our relationship with 
garbage and, and waste. Okay, All right. I can I can wind me up enough. Does the particle work? In that corner, so I can't read the first word, but it says here Oh, Brian. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, Brian is here. Yeah. 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 And then Ashley. That's his name. That's his name. Yeah, that's his name. And then Ashley. Although the characters are um, not really letters, he did include a little message, and I'm going to let Monica tell the story. Yeah. Start there on the top row. See, yeah. See where it has the B in the three lines? Like, right. So it actually says, be powerful like the water dot rigid like stone. Oh. You look across, you can see it. Like so it's, oh, so, yes, so yes. we're, so yeah, starting the it says, be powerful like the water dot rigid like stone. Mm -hmm. Then another easy one to find is over here. So if you start at the vent, and look up to where the wall meets the ceiling, and just over a little bit to the right, you'll see the word spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Kind of fun. Sure. <laughs> Those are the only ones. That I, there's another one, but I like, thought oh, I saw yeah. something up here, but I'm <laughs> right. <laughs> but we're gonna go up to the fourth floor. Some of you can take the elevator, um, and you can't all fit in that one. I'll walk. I can walk the elevator. You need a lift. Um, I would invite you to go along with Monica. The elevator is a little bit younger than the hotel. It was installed probably around 1910, which is when Toronto became widely electrified. It's one of the last hand operated elevators in the city of Toronto. And when we say hand operated, I don't mean like there's someone pedaling in the basement. Um, but Monica or me or one of my colleagues has to actually engage it. It takes some special skill, it's not self-leveling, meaning it doesn't just automatically stop at each floor. The operator has to be eyeballing it. And it's also called a birdcage style, which will be very clear once you step in. So um, if you're riding the elevator all aboard, and if you're cool with walking with me, come on up and we're gonna go to four. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, look at that. Um, we increased the number of hotel rooms from 37 to 55. But it's still a small hotel, and I think we really wanted to embrace that. Um, so rather than it being sort of a typical generic, every floor looks the same, we wanted to make it more feel like you're visiting somebody's really fabulous house. So this space is for guests to enjoy our library. You can borrow a book, you can read it here, you can bring a coffee, glass of wine up, take a book back to your room. Um, and most of the books are from the collection of the owner's late aunt, which is kind of neat because um, it's a, a, a bit of a, um, a mix, but it also, I think it is a, is a really cool capsule of, like, of book design from yeah. the 70s and 60s. I usually have a couple of super good ones right at the ready, but um, yeah, it's just kind of neat to see the end like and pocketbooks like really more pocketbooks the trade paperbacks are a lot bigger now um, and then the books that are in frames are all books that had launch events so when the hotel was under the previous ownership um, from 2005 to 2020 that's when Gladstone House really became known as an art hotel so there were all kinds of book launches and this is just a small sampling of some of the books that had launch events here at the hotel so another nice little nod to the history mm -hmm. so we're going to go and take a peek in um, a couple of the hotel rooms uh, those of you who've been here before may remember that each of the hotel rooms was completely different it was a full design project with wallpaper and custom paint and custom furniture super cool really difficult to maintain um, so we took the approach with this renovation to really streamline things so the fixtures and finishes in each room are the same, but what's different is the artwork. I did a call to artists about a year ago uh, and got 524 submissions, <laughs> which is 
amazing and terrifying. And of course, 250 of them came in in the last 24 hours. Um, so uh, we were going to start with doing 20 rooms. I said to the owner, there's so much great stuff. Can we, can we do more? So we said, let's do 40. And then we couldn't cut out just one more, so we did 41. And now I'm about to embark on the last 15 rooms. So let's take a peek. Um, the rooms are made up, so I would uh, kindly request that you, you don't sit on the bed, even though I know you look super comfy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which was offices and meeting spaces back to hotel rooms, which is how they would have been originally when so the hotel... So you didn't change room sizes? We did not. Um, so this is one of the larger rooms. Um, what the designers did do is they keep the um, individuality among shapes and sizes of the room. So every room, literally every room is different. Um, there's some that are more similar and less similar, but they, each of them has their own little, little quirks. Um, you can see the windows are still original, but the flooring, which we saw in the lobby, continues through the, the whole space. Mm -hmm. Very simple aesthetic. Um, the artwork in this room is by Peter Owusu Ansa. Uh, Peter identifies as uh, deaf, um, he's also black. Um, for him, uh, art is such an incredibly important way of visual communication. As a person who has a hearing impairment, the visual is everything. Peter creates these works digitally, um, mulling over, arranging, rearranging, doing 50, 60, 75, up to 200 combinations until he lands on what he thinks is exactly the right combination of colors and shapes. So it almost looks like it's lit from within, um, but it's just the way the colors kind of vibrate together. Peter uh, has recently had his work acquired by TV for their corporate collection, and he also won the Founders Award at the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair this year, which is a, a really wonderful accomplishment for Peter. How did you manage to get more rooms in the space? Um, we converted the second floor back to hotel rooms. So the second floor had been all offices, meeting rooms, a dressing room, flex studios, and so now it's all back to hotel rooms. Yes, um, so the question about the, the previous artwork, so much of the work was returned to the artist. A bunch of the things, like the furniture items, um, some of them have been recovered and are being repurposed. A lot of the things had kind of reached the end of their, their lives, so had, were, some of it wasn't able to be kept and some of it was donated. Um, unfortunately, like wallpaper and all that stuff. Oh, it was a full renovation. Uh, the work in this room is by Alison Morris, uh, another young photographer, uh, like Sage Stephanie Keister, who we saw in the lobby. Uh, Alison also uses her own body in, in her work. Uh, so we have the, these sort of rather quirky interpretations of, of space. I love that you come in and you see these, these two beautiful works, and then you turn and you're uh, confronted or met by uh, the, the human lamp. Um, I think they're a particularly great fit for uh, a hotel room. A little bit whimsical, a, a little bit unsettling, sort of a spooky fairy tale kind of quality to the work. I think, that, I think I'm talking too much, so we'll, <laughs> keep, it, we'll keep us moving. Uh, this is our billiards lounge. Uh, which I think is a really so each each floor has a slightly different uh, character, and the installation here is works from our archival collection. So we can see what the hotel would have looked like just after opening in 1889. We did have a cupola on top, which was removed in the 1940s because of structural issues. Um, these are amongst my favorite photographs. These are uh, photos of what's now the Melody Bar, which is our live music, drag brunch, performance venue, which will be reopening in January. Uh, these photographs were from about 1910, 
It was some kind of really cool dining lounge with these beautiful monogrammed chairs. And the amazing thing is we have some of the chairs. Now, if you know the history of the hotel, you, you will recall that in the middle of the previous century, up until the Zyber's spot, who were the previous owners, it was a single room occupancy hotel and fell into absolutely terrible disrepair. So very few things survived from when the hotel was a grand railway hotel, but somehow these chairs survived. They're of excellent quality. We had them refinished, and so you'll see them in a few locations around the hotel. Yeah, I, you, now we do the booking more by um, what size and type. So all the beds are either king or queen, so you pick the size of the bed and the size of the room rather than selecting by artist. However, if you know one of the artists and you really want it to be in their room, you could let the, um, you, it's the best bet would be to call and ask for the room that you're most interested in. Uh, so this room is by Cole Swan. There are, there are seven artists, there are seven completely different ideas. Uh, Cole describes this work as kind of Victorian pop, um, kind of reminiscent, I don't know if you saw the wallpaper sample out in the hallway, but sort of reminiscent of Victorian wallpaper. There's also a really lovely correspondence to the architecture outside, which is now obscured by the window blinds, but... <laughs> Um, I love this moment in the corner where you can where you can see this beautiful little conversation between the architectural detail and and the mural. So Cole grinds his own pigments. He harvests earth from high parts from Cheltenham Badlands. Where the hotel bit comes in was not just in this wallpaper notion, but he actually created a pigment from Gladstone House. We had a pile of bricks out back that had been removed for a new doorway, and so he took some of the brick and ground it and made it into pigment, so it's one of the colors on the wall. Wow, he cool. began with the, the lightest washes, then started to articulate some of the forms in the gray and the uh, ochre color, and then the last touch were these black bits that I think really just like, that just made the whole composition like, come together. Um, it's a largely abstract, um, lots of sort of cloudy shapes, but there are a few little friends uh, hidden in the wall. If you follow this line up, you'll see sort of like a horse's head. Um, there's a little, I don't know what this guy is, some kind of little gargoyle thing. Um, Cole is a, a really interesting artist. He, he does, um, he has a whole other body of research around cormorants, so he included a little abstract of oh, yeah. here. Yeah. Um, you can kind of imagine lying back in bed and, and seeing and different it's like looking at clouds, so. shapes yeah. uh, reveal themselves yeah. and, and recede. Um, the pigments are all water soluble, so there is a, a layer of varnish applied on, on top um, so that if you uh, get water on the wall or spill your drink or sneeze, the mural will not, not disappear. Um, just in terms of process, it took him about about a week coming in on and off, um, and he did not do a sketch on the wall, he started painting. However, he did a ton of planning ahead of time in the studio, practice, so he kind of had that, that muscle memory uh, developed when he came in to start work, but it did unfold uh, organically throughout the room. What's the pink? Yeah. Oh, this is the, so this is in the bathroom, and this is just a pink uh, frosted film applied okay. right to the right to the window, um, so that if you so you can uh, see it from in the bathroom. It's so so, yeah, you can look oh, in the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, pull, you can pull the door open. It's pink inside the bathroom too. It's transparent. It's translucent. It's, translucent. it's not transparent, so you can tell like there's somebody in there. So right. you can see light in there. Right? So there have been dichroic film on this. Um, which looked really cool, except if you you were in the shower and your partner ordered room service and opened it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, the general like, hey, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, last but not least, <laughs> uh, Mel, should I take the take over? Oh, I can, uh, you can. You, why don't you tell me? Okay. Tell us about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, come on in. I'm sorry. Oh, I like how it's mirrored. Uh, so these are now the washrooms for the Melody Bar, which is on the on the main floor. So this space down here was all storage, staff offices, workshop, and now it's almost all public space. So we wanted something that was going to be really eye-catching, that you could engage with quickly, that was bright and took advantage of the mirrors. So I contacted my wonderful friend, Cal Honey, <laughs> and said, I bet, I bet you're a guy who could make something for this space. And Cal uh, had not worked with light before, but we um, connected artist and fabricator and Cal came up with about five different designs for this space and we all fell in love with the facade of the hotel it is it's so iconic and the way Cal interpreted it in these um, bright neon colors again captures that old and new together and um, I personally like the the rainbow the Gladstone has always had a reputation as being um, a welcoming space uh, and I think that the, I'm not sure that that was one of Cal's intentions but for me it evokes that that feeling of welcome that we yeah. and inclusiveness that we that we really um, put at the forefront of our business um, fabricated Fabricated by Fuse Neon, um, so it's it's a really cool opportunity for um, an artist to create a work in light, and, but not actually have to know how to do LED neon. Um, and the fabricators loved this so much that they came and did a special video of Cal. <laughs> And so, folks, um, during the course of the workshop, if you if you need a bathroom break, these are your bathrooms to use. These are also for any washing up afterwards. Um, if you get glue on your hands, um, you can come and do the washing up here. Um, so that concludes our tour. There's still more things that you haven't seen, but I hope you'll come back and visit us again and uh, see how things change over. But I hope you have a really fun time this afternoon. I'm going to pop in and be nosy and see what you're working on, but. Have fun and be creative. Thank, Thank you so very much, Thank Lee. You. I really, really appreciate My that. My pleasure.